Let us go pour it on the grace. Oh, gracious Father, we just come this afternoon, oh God, just to say thank you, oh God. Thank you for allowing us, oh God, yet to see yet another day. Oh God, continue to be our strength, oh God. Continue, oh God, to be our redeemer, oh God. Oh God, continue, oh God, to be our all in all. Oh God, I ask that you move Isaac out of the way this afternoon, oh God, for your people to hear a word that only you can hear. Oh God, we thank you and we love you, oh God, for all that you are continuing to do in this place, oh God. We thank you right now, God, and we love you, oh God, for all that you're going to do. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. You got to feel that in your spirit that God dwells on the inside, amen. Not that we just come to the church for any type of form or fashion this afternoon, but we come to give all praise and honor to our, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We come to just give all the glory and honor to him this morning. Not that we take him away, but we give all the praise and honor to his name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. As I was working on the message this week, my mind was yet troubled about how we as Christians portray to be so sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, yes. and we just walk around like we are so high and mighty. But God says that we must humble ourselves, oh God, before Him and before His people, so that His people can see the light that dwells on the inside. I was thinking of the word Christianity this week, and I was trying to figure out what is Christianity or what is Christianity to others that are around me. So as I gather all my thoughts and all the people that I talked to this week that came around me or came my way, I asked some, what was Christianity and what does Christianity mean to them? What I have heard from them was sort of shocking and a little disturbing, but I'm going to go ahead and press on with it anyway because a lot of people think the same way as these folks that I spoke to this week, amen? Some of them would say that you're a Christian if you get up on Sunday morning, put on your Sunday vest, and come to the house of the Lord so that you can pity Pat or give God a little bit of praise. But God said, not nah, so. God said, if you're going to come into my house, you come into my house and give me all the praise and honor that I so deserve. Amen. Some of them also say that if you're a Christian, you'll be able to sing songs of Zion, songs of glory to the Lord. But God said, not nah, so. Even the devil can sing pretty good songs unto the Lord, amen? Yeah. But God said not so. Some will say that you're, you're a Christian if you know some good Bible studies, some Bible stories that you can quote verbatim or something that you can just read out of the Bible. Yeah. Some may think that they're a Christian if they can just verbally or some people like to write it down, verbally or write it down and say that this is what I read from the Bible. I heard about Joseph. I heard about Matthew. I heard about Jesus. But did Jesus hear about you? Some may say that they're Christian because they come to Bible study every week. They come spend an hour or an hour and 30 minutes or so hearing a good word from the Lord. But they think that they're Christian because they take the time to do that. But that doesn't make you a Christian. Some say that they're Christian because their family prays every single night. Or that their family has been Christian for many, many moons. But that still doesn't make you a Christian. Some will say you're a Christian because you live in the greatest land of, the, of it all. That you live in America, and America is a Christian country, so they say. Some will say that you're a Christian because you believe that God exists. Some will say that you're a Christian because you're a nice person. But a nice person is not always a Christian, amen? How do we truly define our Christianity is the question that I ask this afternoon. Do you think your Christianity is found just only in this place? Or does your Christianity dwell on the inside of you? What does it mean to be a Christian? Well, let me take what the Webster definition of a Christian is. It has several different definitions. The first definition was an adjective. It said a person professing, believing in Jesus as Christ or following a religion based on the life and the teachings of Jesus. Webster Dictionary also said relating to or derived from Jesus or Jesus' teachings. The manifesting the qualities of the spirit of Jesus being Christ-like. Relating to the character or the characteristics of Christianity, showing a loving concern for others. Then it also was defined as a noun for Christianity. One who believes in Jesus Christ or follows a particular religion based on the life and teachings 
teachings of Jesus. One who lives according to the teachings of Jesus. By the world's definition of Christian or Christianity, we all have a lot of work to do. By the world's definition of Christianity, sometimes it makes us feel that we are deeply in trouble. Have got a lot of work to do to do and to be able to be a true follower of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us look into the word and let the Lord talk to us this afternoon. The scripture has already been read from Ephesians, the fourth chapter, the, the 20 to the 32nd verse. But I'm also reading the NIV version of it as well. And the NIV version reads thus far. It says, but that isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former ways of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So stop telling lies, let us tell our neighbors the truth. For all we are a part of the same body, and don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry, for anger gives a foothold to the devil. If you are a thief, quit selling. Instead, use your hands for good, hard work, and then give generously to others in need. Don't use a foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful, so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember that he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. It is said, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. We all have been forgiven by our Lord and Savior, we all have took that opportunity to be a part of Christ's kingdom. But many of us today are still living that same lost life that we lived before we became saved. But now is your opportunity to get your mind, your body, your soul, and your spirit right and focus more on God. For what I see here, the word of God in the dictionary are pretty close on what being a Christian or Christianity or being Christ like is. I will not am not judging anyone here today in any form or fashion. I'm going to preach to myself a little bit as well as I preach to you. If you feel like this is you, then hold on to it and go on this journey with us this afternoon. Let it sink in. We'll fight this battle of our fleshly ways together and reach for a more righteous way of living in Christ. When I started off this message, I talked about the definition of what being a Christian is. There is still a lot more to that definition. Let me biblically pr prove to you why. You can get up on Sunday morning and go to church. But what have you done all week to show your walk with God? Have you forgotten about God's people? Have you treated God's people in any kind of way? Have you wronged others? Or have you cut somebody off while you were driving yet to church this morning? Have you did some things that were unpleasing unto God? The question is, for you to think about it and to resonate in your heart and in your mind and in your body to show what you have been doing for God. Have you, like the scriptures say, bring, thrown off those old sinful nature and those former ways of life that you once lived, which was corrupted by lust and deception? If you haven't, then what good is professing that you are a Christian? If you're going to continue to live the way that you once lived, are you going to continue to, to live in that sin? Or are you going to be what God has called you to be? How can you say that you are a person if you're still acting like you did when you were lost? Still hanging with those lost friends, still going to those lost places that you once went to. Still trying to live the dream of this world instead of living the dream that God has in store for you. Before you before you receive salvation, you are doing those things out in the world. But when you receive that salvation, did you continue to have that fire burning on the inside? Or have you let that flame burn out? 
Well, we have that salvation. That salvation starts on the inside. That burning flame that never burns out. That burning flame that's always seeking more and more of God. Are you a person because you went to a church function last night? That you went to a church function last week? Or that you attended church last month? Are you yet a person? What should I do when I can't focus on God? When I can't live the life of the Christian that I want to live? Should I edify God or should I continue to do those things of this world? God says that we're not perfect. We're going to make some type of mistakes. But he said in life that we must give it all to him and always repent first and foremost. Should my character be different from others? If I call myself yet a Christian? What did you do in, at work or school or at home this week to show that you were a Christian? Did you read your word when you had that opportunity? When you had that break at work to go get something out of the snack machine or to get something to eat for lunch, did you take the time to pray over your food or did you take the time just to pray at all? Or did you just continue to do your normal routine? Continue to leave God out of the kitchen? Or did you just fall on your knees? Didn't have to be in a public place. It could have been in the bathroom. It could have been just walking around that you decide to reach out to God and ask God to come into your situation of your life right now. Did you just take the time to say, God, I'm going through and I need you right now. Did you say, oh God, oh God, it is me right now, oh God, that is just standing in that need of prayer. That situation that I'm facing is more than I can handle. But I'm calling unto you, oh God, to take it away right now. Or did you become angry? Or did you get angry at someone this week? Did you hold that anger all weekend? Not ask God for forgiveness or ask God to, to change your mind, right? to change your thoughts, to change your ways? Or did you do like the Bible said? And don't sin by letting anger control you. Did you let that anger control you? Or did you let the anger go? God wants us to be able to let those things of this world go. And continue to serve him wholeheartedly, no matter what situation we face. To always be able to call on the name of Jesus in our time of need, our time of struggle, our time when we need him the most. Or how many lives this week did you tell the people that you interact with? Did you tell them anything about Jesus, his goodness, his mercy, his grace? Or did you tell them countless lives after lives this week? God says that it's important for us to. As Christians to live a godly life. Even though sometimes we want to say things that are not pleasing unto him. But God says for us to be Christian, we must be Christ-like. And I think those same thoughts will tell those same lies that we once did. Because what you are doing in secret, God will reveal. Amen? Amen. I repeat that again. It says what we are doing in a secret, God will reveal. And it will sometimes come at that opportune time that you don't want it to be revealed. But God will reveal it. Is it God to continue to do the things that you do? I like the old phrase when it said, what would Jesus do? When you put in the situations and you look over your life or you look through whatever you may be facing last week or have faced this week or are facing today, you ask yourself, when you get in those type of situations, what would Jesus do? Well, Jesus would do this. The Bible says in the 31st verse of Ephesians 4, to get rid of all bitterness, to get rid of all rage, to get rid of all anger, to get rid of all harsh words and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. That's what Jesus would do. But the real test comes for what would you do when you are put in that particular situation? If you know all the, if you know your Bible, and you know all the stories of the Bible. Many people didn't do what God asked them to do. Many people thought that they didn't need Jesus in their life. But when God had that opportune time and He got their attention, He broke them down to their knees and let them see that they really needed Him and only Him in their life. And as Christians, that's what we need. We need God and only God to survive in this lifetime. Now that we can. Do it on our own. 
Because we can't. And when we try to do it on our own, we fail yet time and time again. Yeah. We ask ourselves time and time again, do I believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Do I tell others about him and how, how he has done such marvelous things in me or in my family or in my life? Are you being a witness to his living word or are you holding his word only, only on the inside? Are you sharing your testimony with someone who is lost to help bring them to you? To the Lord. God challenges us every day to be able to express to others what God is doing in our lives. Now that we're trying to boast or brag or act like we're any better than anybody else, but God gives us an opportunity each day to tell others about our, the goodness of Jesus and all that He has done in our lives and how He has changed us, how He has rearranged us, and how He is still shaping us into what He wants us to be. Do you believe you are a Christian because your mom and dad is a Christian? The answer is no. Your Christianity, your belief starts inside of you. You ask the question, they are living right. Why do I have to live right? Because God says so. Not because man says so, but because God says so. The Bible says to reach out to your own salvation with fear and trembling. Don't count on everybody else's salvation, but you have to count on your own salvation and have that salvation for yourself. If you want to get to heaven, you have to have a relationship with God. Amen? It didn't say you have to have a relationship with your spouse or friend or anybody else. It said you have to have first and foremost a relationship with God. And only with that relationship can He get you into heaven. Because God wants us all to join Him on that wonderful day that He calls us home. But we have to be ready at all times, ready to do what thus says the Lord. If you believe that God exists, then why are you not living for Him? Yes, we may say with our mouths, we sometimes do that lip service as they say. We say that we are so on fire for God, that we love God so much that we will die for God right now. But that's just lip service sometimes for some people. But if we serve our true and living Savior, no matter how it may sound like, no matter how we may get into a situation, no matter how we may endure, our God is yet still and also God that we want to give all the praise and honor to. We want to be able to call on this thing wherever we go. When we're in the car, when we're just walking around, when we're in the bathroom, or whatever else we're doing, we like to call on the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. So let us know that God does exist. And He does dwell on the inside of me. God requires our everything, our all at all times. It's not just believing, but it's living that life that we so practicing that we want to preach. It's about living that life that God has called for us to, to live this day. So you say, Pastor Steele, you still haven't hit my role yet and tell me how do I live a Christian life for God? Well, I'm going to say it as easy as I can say it. It's like taking it one day at a time. One day at a time, you have to take it one step at a time, one crawl, one walk, one reach, one exercise at a time. One prayer, one moment, you just have to Trust and believe that God is yet on your side. When it doesn't look good, God is still on your side. When the situation didn't come out like you wanted it to come out, God is still on your side. When you didn't get that promotion or money that you thought you were going to get, you have to just say, I got it all joy because God is still yet on my side. When your car doesn't work or your car acts up, you say, yet my God is still on my side. My God, my God, bless it right now. But if God doesn't bless it, God said, I gave you two feet to keep on walking, to keep on pressing, to keep on doing what I asked you to do. So I say it takes one day at a time, one step at a time. But the most important thing is to have that faith in God. But you say, Pastor, all oh, this seems so easy, but yet it is still so hard. How can I do this? How can I believe? How can I be a Christian? How can I do what thus says the Lord? I want the things of this world, oh Pastor, but I still want to serve God. But God says that we can't serve two masters. That we have to serve Him wholeheartedly. Because if we serve two masters, we're going to focus on the one that pleases us the much, the most, and not the one that we really need in our life. God says we need Him and not the things of this world. Yet many times we still focus on the things of this world instead of focusing on them. I want the things of this world is what we continue to, to say and think and do. But what does the things of this world bring us? 
Majority of the time, the things of this world brings us pardon. It brings us pain. It brings us things that we shouldn't even have in the first place. But yet God still is alive. Because God wants us to open our eyes and see those things that we are so desiring, so want to have in our lives. And not things that he called for us to have. Not things for that are meant for us to enjoy. But God says that he wants us to enjoy him and the love that he has for us everlasting. If you want to make it, you should surround yourself with people who serve God. So we're going to say godly friend, godly people. People that are going to speak wisdom. People that's going to speak life into your life. And understand what God has in store for you. You have to trust in only God. And continue to believe that God has a greater path for you. Yes, that path may come with some obstacles and bumps and trials and yet tribulations. But God's guidance and God's direction is better than your own. God says he has a plan for us all. That he has a purpose for us all as well. But we have to trust and believe and follow him in all that we need. Sometimes you have to fast so that you can get your flesh under submission. For all the subjects. You have to get into the presence and worship with God. Even when we don't feel like worshiping God, God still wants us to give Him a praise. Yeah. Not just a pick back praise or not a words me praise, but God wants us to give Him all the praise. He wants us to give Him a hallelujah praise. Yeah. Yes, I know things may yeah. not look the way that you want it, yeah. but again, God, I'm going to praise you anyhow. Yeah. I'm going to praise you through my good. Old yeah. I'm going to praise you. My yeah, yeah. The Bible says that he inhabits our praise. Yeah. So if he inhabits our praise, then you probably want to praise him. Yeah. Praise him with a whole heart. Yes, praise him in the good and in the yeah, bad. Yes, you want to continue to praise him that other yeah. So you say, Pastor, going to church, going to things that are religious, going to Bible study, believing in God, being a nice person, doesn't make me a Christian or allow me to have Christianity in my life. Then what in the world am I doing? What in the world am I doing in church today? If those things you just said are not helping me have that life. I'm really saying that those things are not all enough to get you to Christ. I'm saying that you need to reevaluate your life and how you live it. Because for Christ I live and for Christ I live. Let's take a little bit closer at our lives outside the church. I need to be a Christian be Christian minded at all times and not allow my sometimes experiences to be enough to put me in God's grace, God's glory, God's mercy. Being a Christian doesn't mean that I, I'm not going to fall. Because being a Christian means that I am going to fall. But being that Christian, that means that I have to rise time and time again. Because my God, my God, my God is still doing a work in me. God is still working and changing and moving the pieces my life as you can still open the pieces in yours as well. Yet he said we're not perfect, but we continue to give it all to him and let him continue to move those broken pieces, move those things that are not supposed to be in our life. Because our Christian walk involves things that are going to come, things that are going to go. But for us to keep walking for him, to keep acknowledging what God is continuing to do in our life. You say, yes, I'm a child of the king because I care about the laws. And I want to do everything I can to see them be saved. But God said the work starts first in you. You must get yourself right. You must get yourself ready. You must get yourself ready to do what the Father says for for you to do. I want to win my family. I want to win them to God. Instead of depending on them, winning, you winning them to God. Or you winning them to you. You need to let God do the work. You need to let God touch them. You need to let God reach down on the inside and stop doing some changes in them. Yes. Many times we want to bring our family to Christ. We want to have them living that life. But sometimes they're just doing it just to please us. But we don't want them to please us, but we want them to please God. And we want them to reach God the same way that God is reaching us. So we have to understand that their walk may be a little bit different from our walk, but still encourage them to praise God. To give God all the glory, to give God all the honor, and to continue to walk that walk. No matter how it may look, but to continue to do what thus says the Lord. I want to show you today that God still exists. 
about God obeying his command. Many times we fall short of obeying his commands. But we can, we can do whatever everybody else commands us to do. But God says obey my commands. And live for me. And then living for me is by my word. By my word is living for me. Doing the things I ask you to do. Giving up those sinful ways, those sinful natures. Being Christ-like. Being more like me. Christ.